Okay, let's talk about the Tesla Cybertruck, November 21st, 2019, presented by Elon Musk. Hi, my name's Killer Barnett. I'm here with Bitcoin1776, and welcome to Mars. Official SpaceX, SpaceX Cup going to Mars. Cybertruck behind me in the Cybertruck handwriting. Hope you like it. All right, let's get started. So uh, here's a version of the Cybertruck, if you guys haven't seen it before. Um, a lot of people are put off by the looks a little bit uh, as it's very unnatural. It's cubic or uh, modern in its look, uh, but I think it's actually going to do really well for sales and profitability of Tesla. I'll get into that more. Um, but this is not something that you would find in nature. There's not a lot of smooth edges. Um, it doesn't look like a flower. Okay, now uh, let's go over the specs. The specs for the truck, it gets uh, two point, it goes zero to 60 in, in under three seconds, which is race car fast. That's incredibly fast uh, for the highest end edition, which is $70,000. Tow 14,000 pounds, quite hefty, 500 miles. Um, I think the top end edition, while I'm normally not a luxury guy, I think for the Cybertruck, it's, it's really a wonderful deal. Um, the base of the car starts at $40,000, and that's $40,000, and then on top of that, you're going to probably save another $1,500 a year in gas and reduced maintenance. This is the Rivian next to it, uh, which is a competing EV automaker, not very popular. They haven't made a vehicle yet, um, but their, their car is more and does less, as you might expect. And over on the far side, we got what a regular truck can do for about $40,000, uh, which is a little bit more than the basic version of the Cybertruck. Um, but of course, it's a gas car. And the big difference is that um, a regular truck, if you're, if you're towing it fully loaded, you probably will get better range uh, with a regular truck. Okay, so now, but the Cybertruck has a lot of unique features. It is bulletproof. It has a 240V uh, outlet. It has full self-driving available, access to superchargers, and a covered bed or a covered cab. Okay, so now here is uh, some renderings of how the customers of Tesla are envisioning themselves in a cyber truck. And you can already see that it has a lot of a space connotation, outdoor connotation, exploring of Earth. Here's one of the um, renders that uh, Tesla put online. I love this stovetop here. I love um, that it has the power to have an electric stove um, in this camper top. This is exactly how I would envision myself in a cyber truck. I'm not about to take up construction work, uh, but I do enjoy camping. Now this black mate finish, Elon Musk has already said that he really likes that. Um, and he's also said in regard to this uh, Warthog uh, gun turret add-on to the back of the Cybertruck, uh, Elon says that he likes that too. And uh, you can uh, you can kind of see just how in the bottom left there you got the Star Wars with the Cybertruck just kind of fitting right in there. So when you think Cybertruck, you want to think unpainted or undressed vehicle. Uh, some people call it an armored personal carrier. I don't particularly necessarily feel I need the military aspect of the vehicle, but I do like that. And the idea of just dressing it up myself is wonderful. The, the cosplay out aspect, uh, the versatility of it, it's so affordable at $40,000 that you can, for an electric vehicle that's a truck, you absolutely can, uh, can uh, justify putting 5000 10000 into the cosmetics to make it the truck that is personalized to you. All right, so, um, and here's the truck as like a truck might be on Mars. Our team here, Franz right here in all black, lead design for Tesla. Um, here is the bed of the truck. Uh, you can kind of already see that it's, it's quite a big bed. It's a 6.5 feet foot bed with a hundred square feet of a cubic feet of storage. Um, okay, and there's a little hidden trunk here 
and there's three other compartments, one here and then one on the front. So, so two side trunks, a front trunk, a back trunk, and a bed that, that is covered. And in person, it's much more glossy and impressive than it does appear in the pictures because there's nothing really to scale it very well. But in person, it's a very impressive vehicle. Three foot longer than the Model S, the, the longest Tesla vehicle that they've made so far. Now, um, I got a video showing this later, but this is just how the, the cab uh, closes itself. You can see how the bed is covered up here. It retracts into this back window over here, and then it slides down underneath the vehicle. It looks very cool. The interior is probably more beautiful than any other Tesla I've seen. Now, it's very... Um, it's it's very uh, simple, but I I really love it. I really love it. Um, it just looks so durable. Like you're not gonna mess it up. You're not gonna have a lot to clean. Um, you can customize this interior however you want. And it's uh, even though I am not a tall person, I think someone who's seven foot four could absolutely fit and feel very comfortable in this vehicle with this uh, quite a uh, quite a high roof um, and even for the back seats with three I've seen three grown adults in these back seats and they have arm room they have quite a bit of room uh, once you have the sixth person in this middle front seat um, you have a lot less vision I guess but otherwise that front seat right here it can fold down into a cup holder as you would anticipate all right so um, here's the Rivian the competitor, competing EV vehicle that is not out. You can see that it has this giant, uh, all your electric vehicles are gonna have a giant intake, air intake to cool down the undercarriage battery. And here's the Cybertruck. And there's just a world of difference. Are, are these cars even comparable? Do you, is, does anybody look at these two cars and say that they're in the same market? And then when you look at uh, this this vehicle, you feel like it's competing against every truck that it's ever existed. And this vehicle is competing against nothing. So there's the Cybertruck and a truck. And once you get into trucks, there's thousands of different types of trucks and only one Cybertruck. Now there's a lot of modifications coming out. People are getting ideas. They're seeing that this truck could be easily modified to become a van. Um, here's the only real clip of the side panels. Not very good, but this was in the Elon's presentation. Um, you got the the trunk, uh, the the front of the car here. You got the side panels here, and you already saw the other uh, storage that's underneath the bed of the car. Now, what's quite fascinating about this car is that it's purely exoskeleton. It's pure frame. Um, you almost never see the frame on a car. It's covered up by body and paint, etc. This is an unpainted stainless steel bulletproof frame with uh, ballistics glass. So it's it's, it's quite, quite a, a very durable, durable vehicle, vehicle, very light by reducing, reducing all that extra, extra weight, weight that's, that's attached to it. And um, it's, it's a lot cheaper to be made this way, probably about $10,000 cheaper. And uh, you don't, you, you can't really dent this vehicle. Um, it is so durable, so strong. Uh, there's a lot of objects that would just crumple if it got hit by this car, while this car offers nothing for you to crumple against. Okay, now um, here's the ATV. This is really, I think, going to be the biggest market for the Cybertruck. Now, uh, a lot of folks in Cali might not be familiar with ATV culture. I was over at uh, Frozen Head Park in East Tennessee just the other day near Brushy Mountain Penitentiary, and I saw no less than 500 ATVs tra traveling down the road. Now, I don't know if there's an ATV convention or if they just do this whenever the fall weather gets out and they just ride through the mountains on ATVs, but holy smokes, does it look fun. And does this not look fun 
to take just into the back country, charge up your ATV with the Cybertruck, and just go to town. All right, um, I'm going to talk about some accessories now. I'll, I'm going to flip. I'll flip it back to me for a sec. All right, so to go over the accessories, it's uh, a Tesla ATV all-terrain vehicle, uh, armored armored personal carrier. It had it'll probably have a, a van option in the future. It ha it's going to come with something um, that's called the Solar Hawk expansion. That's going to recharge up to 40 miles per day which is very impressive if you're doing a long extended camp out 120 and 240 volt outlets for uh the power if you're construct in construction all your tools it'll cool a um like a fridge like item or you could have your cpu connected with starlink and the cyber truck so now with this uh solar hawk expansion with your cpu with starlink um, cooling for your for your food you can now survive a very long time not connected to a grid not uh, while even working and getting paid not connected to the grid that's that's just phenomenal for independence and reduction of or expansion of the locations in which a person can operate it's bulletproof 360 bulletproof armor and glass it's a bunker buster strong, cheap insurance. There's no extra parts. There's really no after, once you get the car, uh, the only way that you can replace a part is if it's totaled. There's no small parts that can be replaced practically. It has a hard top retractable bed cab with pressurization optional for the Mars edition. So Elon has already talked about having wanting to have a submarine or a vehicle that could survive uh, underwater, and the Cybertruck looks like that's what what that's going to be, or survive in space on Mars. It has an easy entry ramp tilt, a front storage, bed storage, two side storages, and going to remove trunk. That's just too many times. Um, it has a camper edition optional. It it can. It, the Cybertruck can set up a charger daisy chain for emergency mobile power. So uh, for those of you who don't know, a Cybertruck, the uh, maxed out version at 70,000, is going to come with roughly five to six equivalent power walls within the vehicle. Each of these sell for about 6,000 from Tesla, so you might have 35,000 in batteries, half of the cost of the vehicle in batteries for the maxed out edition. So what this allows you to do is if someone's car is broken down, another Tesla is broken down, you can drive up with your Cybertruck, uh, use the 240 volt charger, plug it into their Tesla and recharge their car so that they could get going. And with 500 miles on your vehicle, you're gonna be quite, uh, you're gonna have plenty of charge to for this to work 16 inch ground clearance which is quite high similar to a jeep air adjustable inflation so you can lower it to about eight inches self-inflating tires which is similar to a hummer easily customized flat impermeable surfaces a hundred percent pure frame so i just want to emphasize that again you can just tell how easy it's going to be to paint and draw on this vehicle you can just tell that there's nothing to be dented here no real scrapes to worry about now uh, let's take a look at some old cars so this uh, car in the top left was created in uh, 1920 or 100 years ago and on the bottom right is your modern vehicle and you can kind of see there's not really a lot of change in the look of the car and once you start familiarizing yourself and and just believing in the cyber truck there's only two cars left a cyber truck and all other trucks sure they're going to try to tell you that they're different they're going to try to brag about how they're you know just just look at this thing and look how many parts there are that can be dented on this on this vehicle here look how many how much you're going to have in repair for every little piece that could go wrong get bent hail damage all that no hail damage with the Cybertruck. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of story time. And I'll, I'll read this off. Okay. 
Keep in mind, not a single car will look like the Cybertruck shown. You'll see eight different Cybertrucks diving, driving down the road, painted and tatted up. Many will rig up fantasy designs, cosplay. 360 flamethrowers, anyone? Oddly, it's going to dominate military application. So rugged, powerful. If people regularly had AKs on my street, I'd want a Cybertruck versus Jeep, Hummer, or exposed truck. So if the car is base 40,000, plus 10,000 if you want to design a fantasy car to sit on top, it looks so easy to work with, but maybe not. How many categories of trucks will there be? What were there before? Eight? Now it's truck versus cyber truck. Two. I figure the stamping saves eight to 15,000 per car. What else? Who is canceling their 3Y, S, or X for this? I think no one. You now own two Teslas by default. A getting around car and a cyber truck. Oh, and the truck can come with solar to recharge 40 miles per day with Solar Hawk expansion and a place for a cooler in the bed trunk and a stove. Covered, stormproof, recharging, cooking, preserving, air conditioned. Model Y I thought would be a perfect road trip vehicle. Now imagine this, cyber truck tricked out, ATV in the back, you park with groceries and wings, you have a heated shower, cold breakfast, and power for your ATV. You travel across the landscape for weeks to months at a time. Cybertruck. Explore. Key fact summary, 100% frame, bulletproof stainless steel folded 30 times, 80 8,000 to 15,000 cost savings. Reduced production time by 30% estimated. Reduced plant cost, so capital equipment investment, by $1 billion estimated, about a third or fourth of the capital equipment needed. No color options except for black, he's already stated. No breakable parts. Um, it's just pure frame right here. And possibly fast with 2.9 seconds, 0 to 60, versus 5.5 seconds standard, in other truck in gas trucks, it's race car fast. Ultra high suspension suitable for off-roading like a Jeep. Huge towing for camper, horses, modified van. Now, uh, just to keep this in mind, trailers start at 3,000 pounds. So if you get the uh, smaller version, you might have a cargo uh, amount of 4,000 pounds, two tons. But if you get the biggest version, you'll be able to tow uh, five tons. Infinite miles. 10 hours driving per day without cargo. Incredibly, 10, 10 hours driving, uh, 500 miles, yeah. Incredibly cheap with 1.5 thousand in annual savings if you drive one hour per day. It's a very versatile vehicle. Now, if you drive three hours per day, it makes absolutely no economic sense to get a gas truck. It's gonna be the best camper, adventurer, explorer truck, bar none, nothing close. The best celebrity, punk rock, cosplay, brand building vehicle, nothing close. So now when you're now when you're talking about the market of who buys a new vehicle, your daily construction worker who actually uses their truck to do um, household repair, most of these guys have a five thousand dollar truck. There's so many trucks on the road you can get a used look alike truck that's a truck for a very cheap cost. But when it comes to buying a new truck, when you want to stand out and market yourself and get attention, these people buy new vehicles. And the Cybertruck is going to dominate that market. It's very, very uh, attractive, very attention getting, really going to help with your brand. You could just kind of look on the internet how many people have YouTube channels and have become famous celebrities just because they bought a Tesla. And then, and then made videos about it. It's going to be the same with the Cybertruck. Now, let's look at uh, the, the expectations. We expect daily workers to get uh, used trucks, not new trucks. Um, there's probably about 20 million trucks already in America. I don't know the real figures here. 
So when it comes to Cybertruck versus regular truck, there's a huge market of used trucks that are going to deter people from getting another new lookalike truck versus Cybertruck. The new market of trucks is about 3 million, mostly speaking in America, 3 million trucks annually. Could be a little less. Um, but the Cybertruck is also going to compete in the RV, the van, the Jeep market. So um, it's going to compete in the military campaign market. Now, the military campaign market in America, a lot of people don't really think about this, but plenty of you by now have probably seen videos of people in the Middle East just loving to drive around in these Toyota Tundras, which were like the official uh, car of the insurgents. But I could definitely see this becoming the Cybertruck. And also, U.S. military often choose to drive around in civilian-made vehicles uh, because they're more convenient, faster, uh, and reliable versus some uh, privately made uh, specialty uh, military-grade vehicle. So the Cybertruck's going to fit that market. Celebrities, cosplay, brand building, cinema. You're going to see the Cybertruck in all kinds of futuristic movies. I might expect... 300,000 annually to be sold. Now you probably, as of the making of this video, which is about five days after the initial uh, the initial demo of the truck, you probably already have 300,000 reservations for the Cybertruck. So I expect about 300,000 to be sold annually, about equal to the number of reservations so far. With a similar gross margin to the Model Y, which is about 25%, $4 billion profit per year, and uh, with the with the value of the Tesla stock, that would about double the uh, fair value of the stock once it one if these things play out to about seven hundred dollars today. If you say the Tesla stock right now is valued purely with Model Y, Model Three, and no other uh, additions to it. Now, Tesla is also doing solar roofs, which I expect to be big in the next two years, about the same time the Cybertruck is ramping up which could definitely justify a price of $950 into the future. So I expect all the trucks between 1920 and 2020 that all look the same to cannibalize them, th themselves for mediocrity with little Tesla self-cannibalization. Again, that's just making the point that whereas the 3, the Y, the S are all kind of very similar looking vehicles. The Cybertruck, you're, you're not going to get rid of your Model 3, your city car for your Cybertruck. You're going to start owning two vehicles now, Cybertruck and a city, a city vehicle like a Model 3 S or um, X or Y. So now let's say um, my recommendation for people who are watching this video, I would go ahead and reserve both models, frankly. Um, I think they're both so good. I don't really, um, I, I'm, not, I'm not a luxury car guy, but I think the Explorer Edition with 500 miles at $70,000 is just too freaking good. Now, a lot of people are comparing this to the S and the X today. Two years from now, the S and the X could have 500 miles. They probably will. And they will probably be for a similar... They'll be more than the Cybertruck because they have body paint styling. Um, that's just at least that's at least $20,000 more in cost for those luxury vehicles. So it's going to be more than the Cybertruck um, for similar mileage. But still, $70,000 is amazing. Um, just don't get too blown up about that because that's two or three years into the future. So uh, electric vehicle pricing will probably change. But I really, the $40,000 edition, if you, if you drive your car at all, if you drive a truck at all economically, it's just insane. That's, that's like, if you drive one hour a day, that's equivalent cost to maybe a $30,000 new truck. Um, if you drive three hours a, a day, uh, the truck is practically free with the amount of savings that you'll get from uh, changing over from gas to uh, power plant power or solar power. So um, the base model is good single purpose vehicle. With a trailer, you might get about half the range, 120 miles of range. 
whereas the Explorer Edition hauls five tons plus the plus a three thousand pound trailer. You'll probably end up getting two hundred fifty miles range with that. Um, practically an RV, most likely. So I I always speculated that Tesla has to come out with a van. It has to come out with an RV. It has to come out with a uh, truck. But the Cybertruck with this affordable pricing is probably going to fit all three. So, um, so you can make these reservations for a hundred dollars refundable, I think, which is kind of silly, but that's fine. And decide and decide later, which one you want to get or both. And you should, because I do expect a buildup of demand. There's so much demand in the first week, so much demand that if you're one of the early reservation holders, you might be able to resell, resell your car for profit. And in addition to that, if you lock in today's pricing, you're probably going to save $3,000 on the cost of full self-driving by the time that the car is released. Full self-driving will probably go up about $3,000 between now and when the car is released. So if you, uh, so if you do your reservation, do it with full self-driving. That, that is my recommendation. <laughs> okay, there you go. I mean, it, this is the Cybertruck. Is can you compare it to anything else? All right, the, anything that's not a movie generated from the future, like Iron Man or Spider Man. All right, now let's talk about financing. <clears throat> so, a forty thousand dollar vehicle is no joke. So, what I'm going to recommend, I'm going to make. Uh, three possible recommendations of how to get this car for ten thousand dollars today so if you take uh so of course do what you feel like doing but i would recommend uh considering putting ten thousand dollars into january 2022 tesla call options and if uh, with luck this could turn into forty thousand dollars and therefore you get your base model Cybertruck for $10,000 plus two years of investment time, which is how long it takes for the vehicle to come out anyway. Now, the advantage of doing January 2022 call options, you got a little bit of uh, reduced risk as these call options are two, two years out. And then um, if the stock hits $750, then uh, instead of doubling your money, you quadruple your money with these call options. And plus, if it doesn't work out, you can always just cancel your reservation. You took a little bit of a gamble, and there you are. Alternatively, you can take your $10,000, put it into Bitcoin, which is at a very low price today. You can use uh, Nexo Lending to double up your coins. That's a little bit of leveraging, is similar to the call options, which would therefore get you to 2.5 Bitcoins for $10,000 plus a $10,000 loan against your coins at an $8,000 value per Bitcoin. So uh, Bitcoin at one time hit $20,000. This is uh, back two or three years ago. There's a 50% reduction in coins coming up in exactly six months, May 2020. And this rationing of coins usually drives the price through the moon. The same as uh, rationing oil. If, if OPEC cuts production by 50%, then the price per barrel uh, logically goes up. So um, while it's not exactly the same, there is a good potential that Bitcoin could one day return to $20,000 valuation prior to December 20, 2022. And therefore, your $10,000 could arrive at $40,000. Or a third, a third choice is to uh, start with Bitcoin and get your uh, get your Bitcoin while the price is kind of on the lower range and then wait six months until the 50% reduction, wait till the price about doubles or whatever you think is sensible, and then move that into Tesla call options. Um, the Tesla price is at an all time high right now. So it's hard to recommend uh, doing these call options right now. Um, but the price might go down to 250 bucks or less. Who knows? It was 250 bucks just two or three months ago. I'm not saying it's it's guaranteed to happen, but uh, something uh, accidents happen, recessions come, and you never expect it. A lot of people are banking on a recession. A recession would definitely hurt car makers more than um, other types of industries. Now Tesla is quite diversified in the products that they offer. They're not. Uh, 
to, but to call them recession proof is is a very strong statement. So if you got the cash, you could either uh, go into Bitcoin, which is on uh, if a recent range is fourteen to three thousand, and the spot price right now is seven thousand, about twice the low. Or you could go into Tesla. I would definitely recommend at least waiting six months, three to six months, until the price is two hundred fifty bucks or less potentially, and then uh, and then locking in your call options at that time. Um, so, what are your thoughts on Cybertruck? Could you use it to explore Earth? And how could he say no? I mean, look at him. He's talking to you. He's asking you. Hey, this is what I do. This is this is what I've done. Get my cyber truck, conquer Earth, take over this land, and colonize it. Prepare for Mars. Or 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 do you want uh, one of the other trucks? Is is that what you want? Or uh, is this? Or do you think the cyber trucks a dud? Wah wah. Uh, I'll play a video here in a second. This is. Uh, Elon's demonstration. I I really am proud that he went out on a limb there. I love it when people take risk. I love the the Cybertruck, even though my initial reaction was that it's a very ugly vehicle and it will always be unnatural. There's nothing natural about the car. But just if you have an imagination, unpainted furniture is not unpainted forever. IKEA parts look like crap until you assemble them into furniture. This car is meant to be assembled into whatever you want. Now look at that clearance too. Uh, that is a very, very high clearance. And with air suspension, you can make it very low for uh, 130 miles, I believe, top speed with the Explorer Edition, uh, three seconds, zero to 60, three motors in it. You can make the suspension very low or you could uh, make it very high to mimic a Jeep. And that there is the Cybertruck by Tesla. And uh, here is uh, some still shots, and I'll play videos now, of um, Franz throwing the steel ball at the window, and it, it, and it doesn't break. So uh, let's go ahead and look at that first, because I think it's just wonderful. Now I'm gonna emphasize the sounds here before I play the video uh, through, because I just want to, it's a very small object. That's the object landing. Steel ball, uh, one kilogram, two pounds, landing just on the ground. That's how heavy it is. And here it is hitting the window. Okay, it might take a second. <laughs> oh my. Okay, here it is. I'm going to make this smaller just to get it play a little faster. Sorry about that, guys. Oh, goodness. Okay. This will take me just a second. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm going to make it small now. But yeah, I just want to emphasize that sound and against the window. Just hear how loud that is. Oh, Jesus. All right, well. And the guys. Okay, I'm gonna just let it play out this time. Okay, and you can find that on Twitter. So um, now let's go ahead and uh, now also I just want to also emphasize just how the truck looks driving around. It's freaking incredible. When it's on stage and not moving, uh, the car just doesn't look right not moving at top speed. It doesn't look right bobbling all over Earth. It doesn't look right not running over something. Here it is. I'm going to play a little bit from this. I, I like this video. This is by um, I Like Tesla. I really like her videos. She does a great job. That's right. This is the center seat, center console. 
and just and she asked a very interesting question what is that white made out of and um, let's see if you can take a guess so this white here and the white on the dashboard a lot of people have called this marble <laughs> so uh, so that is paper, compressed paper, which uh, just makes it very uh, cheap and very light, which I think is the real uh, reason that they went with it. And, and also it's a good um, it's a good uh, recyclable material. Now let's look at the trunk because I wish he displayed this in the presentation, but he did get a little flustered. We'll go into the presentation here in a second. Now let's watch the trunk move. That's a lot cooler than I was expecting. Okay, now you can kind of imagine that you can't bust out this section as easy as you might think. You could probably bust out the window or you could bust out the roof. Okay, so that's enough for that. Is there no chance? Okay, so that's enough for that, but I just want to emphasize both how cool that is so cool and then also uh that um some people might have been looking to bust the cab into the uh bust the cab into the trunk bed but you probably won't be able to do that since it's integrated into the uh eventually to be pressurized lid now let's go ahead and go over the tesla presentation he has some really cool effects here we're going to see the cyber truck a race against a 911. We're going to see it tow uh, a um, another truck uphill. Just pull the truck uphill while it tries to go against it. We're going to see some other cool things. Now this is sped up. This is a sped up video. Um, One point. Now listen to the sounds as it hits the crumpling as it hits a regular door. Now, the Cybertruck is stainless steel 30 times folded. This is not. Crumple, crumple, crumple. Nothing. Look how big that thing is. It's just huge. And it's incredible. <laughs> now this is in California. If this is in Tennessee if this is in Tennessee or Kentucky, we could shoot it. That's so cool. And Mars. I, now, apologies for the audio. I, I can't really get the audio going great, but that's fine. A one-pound ball. So 
the, the ball that you see later is a two pound ball. And they do a quick switch out to the to the two pound ball, but they don't emphasize it. I, I love this costume here. This is what Cyber Truck is. And I love I love that lady's uh her raven wings. I think they're so cool. <laughs> no, Franz, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it, Franz. Okay, so uh, Elon gets a little flustered, notably. That was not planned. I know a lot of people say it was planned it was not so let's jump he uh kind of wants to get to the highlights where he gets back on track let's watch him get back on track and get excited about his vehicle again which is phenomenal now before we start this video if you look carefully in the background you can see that things are slanted this way they do a terrible job of showing it but this cyber truck is going up uh, a fairly steep hill pulling this other car. I'm going to do it one more time. Listen to this thing pulling. Zero to sixty three three seconds. So Cybertruck versus a, a nine eleven. Now let's see the, how does this uh, compare to uh, the Porsche nine eleven? Okay, we give the Porsche a little bit of a head start. Yeah, let's look at the current current position of Porsche. And this is the actual track. That is not CGI. Okay, now let's let's jump to the end of the vi uh, the end of the presentation, and here we go. Thank you, Elon, for your cyber truck. And um, this is just a funny little clip, uh, li cuss words for the younger the younger uh, audience. But this is for everyone who shorted a Tesla stock a little press uh, before it took off. So let's let's send out a little message to them real quick. Uh, do you have anything to say to them, uh, Rossman, computer repairman, Apple computer repairman? Before we get started with anything else, I just think it's really important. And I, I just want to preface, I mean this in the most positive way possible, positive way possible, to give a big middle finger to every single lying broker. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> I just I just like that so much. So all right, so uh, happy Cybertruck Day. I will go ahead and go over a few more little maths back here, just just so that you can uh, kind of think about the Cybertruck and the math uh, sc scale a little bit, but. Let's go ahead and go over that um, at the end of the video, but we're pretty much done. Thank you very much for uh, liking, subscribing to the videos, etc. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is go over the 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 gas savings and the maintenance savings on a Cybertruck. So if you drive about one hour per day, you're gonna save 1.5 thousand um, in maintenance and gas savings on a $40,000 base vehicle. Now, if you take that 1.5 thousand in savings, let me see if I can get, uh, I can't get better lighting, I don't think. Let's see. I don't know. I don't know if that's gonna do anything better, but if you take that 1.5 savings and you, d you give it a CapEx value, which let's just say if we call it a 10% value, then you divide this by 10% and that's gonna give you that's gonna give you fifteen thousand dollar value uh, uh, present value on the savings from gas and um, on the savings from gas and reduced maintenance costs of the vehicle. Now, uh, this is for driving one hour per day. Now let's do three hours per day. So at three hours per day, you're gonna have a capitalized savings rate over 10 years of $45,000, basically paying for the base model. Now granted, just keep in mind, the base model is gonna go 250 miles, maybe about 100, 125 miles fully loaded towing. So um, whereas a regular gas car, might, a gas truck might go 300 miles towing, I'm not sure. But uh, still, that's a huge amount of savings. Pra that's just, people do not appreciate how affordable this vehicle is if you use a car. If you drive three hours per day, the car is gonna pay for itself in no time. If you drive one hour per day, instead of $40,000, it's much more like you're buying a $25,000 brand new truck. A $25,000 brand new truck. So that's, that's, that's amazing. Now uh, let, let's let's do some other math here for Tesla profitability. For starters, let's say they're going to sell three hundred thousand in the second year, first and second year, third year. Now keep in mind that the car is made quicker, sells faster, lower inventory, lower plant cost, um, made from Starship materials. But let, let's go ahead and look at it. And let's assume 25% profitability with an average sales price with full self-driving included. It's probably more profitable than this, but uh, with full self-driving included, let's say it's gonna sell for 60,000 on average.
Okay, I didn't give myself near enough room there. But $18 million. Uh, $18 billion. $18 billion. And then if we say 25% profit, now we're looking at uh, 4.25. Um, yeah, looking at 4.25 profit there. Now, if uh, for for a company, you might typically give it a multiple of divided by, divided by 0.2. You might divide it by 0.2 to say when, when you're assessing the value of a company, saying that the company might that the product's going to run its course within five years which gives you a, a stock value of uh, $20 billion. So my little, my, my math earlier was a little bit off, but that's fine. Um, so $20 billion uh, is in terms of the number of Tesla shares available. This is approximately um, $200 of stock value. So the stock is currently $350. If these numbers were realized and um, it, it directly added to the stock value, then you'd expect it to go to $550. Now, $300,000 is about 10% of the truck market. But once you include the military market, the RV market, the um, celebrity market, the brand building market, 300,000 might be more like 5% of all those markets wrapped together. And all of these people are the type of people who buy brand new cars. So, um, so, so I am going to just double check my previous math just to make sure I got that right. But I think I did. Yep. Okay, good. So, uh, so there you go. So that's, that's what you might expect from a stock valuation with 25% profit margin. Let me just go ahead and write that in there. It's not really ROI, but that's fine. 25% uh, profit margin uh, with an average sales price of 60,000 because the base truck is 40,000 plus, it'll probably end up being 10,000 by, by the time the, the actual truck rolls out plus 10,000 for full self-driving. So you're gonna see around 60,000, probably more be your average price. Now, are there any other numbers? One more time with the Mars cup, I love it. So my coffee is cold now, gone red. So are there any other numbers we can look at uh, with the truck in it? I don't think so. So that is gonna wrap up the video. Thank you very much. My name's Keller Barnett. I'm with uh, Bitcoin 1776. Uh, showcasing the Cybertruck. I am so excited. I really think it's going to be a great car. I think you're going to enjoy it. I think you're going to enjoy mocking up the car and making it your car because it's, it's not Tesla who's painted and dressed the vehicle for you. That's up to you. You have to get creative. You can't just leave this thing being uh, an oven that's driving down the street. Paint it up. Make it look nice. So uh, the Cybertruck, solid steel, stainless, armored personal carrier with battery, with Solar Hawk expansion, able to camp out for days and days with an ATV to explore the terrain. Um, Starlink coming out, that's gonna be linked up to these trucks. Now Starlink, uh, people don't know. Elon's price on Starlink is absolutely ridiculous. He wants to do it for less than $100 a month. But this is a very powerful 4K streaming global internet accessible anywhere. Anyways, but with the Starlink, with the Cybertruck, with the SolarHawk expansion, you're going to have power, internet, and transportation anywhere in the world. No need to be in the grid. No need to be in the city. No need to connect to anyone else ever again. It's, it's a lot of independence. It's a lot to take in. It's a lot to take in. Buy you some land. Buy you a Cybertruck you know, capture, capture a spouse and there you go. All right. Hope, hope you enjoyed this presentation. Take care guys.